it's five, we're live. Welcome to Frankly Speaking, where truth is our mission, rally our realm, set as we see it, and frankly as well. I'm Joe Spina, along with Bill Newell, and two or three of the sages. Malcolm is still uh, tending to his uh, uh, Malcolm's bride. still tending to his bride, and uh, she's doing a lot better. So that, that, that's, that's good. That's great to yeah. hear. Right. Bill, thanks for stopping in again. Bill is um, with WESX many years ago, sportscaster, and you're now with, um, what is the name of that institution? MSONewsports.com. Right. And so. you got over 5 million hits last year, huh? Uh, yes, absolutely, yeah. And that's that mean, actually, yeah. I mean, you know, expand a little bit while he's taking the chair away. Oh, okay. Right. Losing a chair? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I thought I'd have to jump no, over that's, to that. You don't okay. Have to but, uh, yeah, well, we do news and sports features, interviews, and live football games in the fall. And you've done things. a lot of interviews. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in fact, it impacts from Gloucester to where? To Saugus? Uh, yeah, down to yeah. Saugus, Winthrop, those, all those all around the North Shore, uh, up to the, uh, even up to Newburyport, up in that area. So well. let's give, do we have that up there? Yeah, we do, as a matter of fact, don't right. we? It's 978 325 36 Three eight is that? If they want to call uh, well, the, the email address is probably the best one to use or go to there. Okay, so any of you folks, get your pen out and email it. Something happened a week ago uh, in the city of Lynn. I think it was a, there was a little demonstration. Yeah, there's a little demonstration in front of Gliss, and uh, there, there, there's, there's a dispute there between uh, somebody who has left the company and, and the and, and the boss over there, and. Uh, well, actually, actually, there's two separate entities, aren't they not? I mean, you're talking about Gliss. There's Gliss and... Well, and Gliss is a, a nonprofit. Right. And if I understand this correctly, Gliss was allowing the city agency to use space. Right. Is that correct? On the first uh, floor, I think. And so a bunch of them went over there because they wanted answers to questions that they never, they never framed the question. Right. And the individual who happens to be on the show, Paul Crowley... Mm -hmm. Great guy, happened to be doing God's work. Right, uh, right. He does and he a good job. There. Right. So and they, they were demonstrating against Paul is what well, they were no, doing. They well, apparently, well, but whatever. really, really. The, the point, the point is this: is that they responded by putting out a press release, Billy, uh, to, uh, and it wasn't printed. The item didn't print the thing, apparently. And so we're going to put it up there for you people to see. Mm -hmm. And Bill, you got the great voice. Can you read it for us? <laughs> More than forty years. Yeah. Okay. For for more than 40 years, Greater Lynn Senior Services, uh, GLIS, has collaborated with the City of Lynn and the Lynn Council on Aging to provide our residents with the best possible services and supports to ensure that the Lynn Senior Center could always offer highest quality social services, including meals, trips, transportation, and other critical programs. GLIS has also continuously provided significant funding to the Senior Center to augment the municipal support. Uh, regardless of changes in the senior center staffing over the years, seniors have always benefited from the best services and resources possible. And again, this will continue to occur. While it is not our policy to comment on personnel issues, we want to emphasize that what makes GLIS and the senior center such a vital resource to the city is the commitment we all share to our residents. There is a lot of great programming happening at the senior center, lunch, trips, bingo, and many other very valuable and educational programming, and we invite you to come and see firsthand all it has to offer. Mm. Right. That pretty much says it all, doesn't right, it? Right, yeah, well, right. From a guy who's on the sidelines and has nothing, no idea what's going on, to me it's all politics. Right. Of course it's all politics, well, they, it always is, isn't it? Well, had, apparently, okay, but I, I wouldn't know this until I just heard what he just said. Right. If it's senior related, you guys should know, right? I mean, well, of course, you know. well, a they, kid like you would never know. No, a kid like me, no. The big, the big, the big sign. Oh, okay, the big sign. The big sign. Yeah. The big sign was Lynn Council on Aging, and it really was it was really Mass Senior Action that was behind it all, okay? And what upsets me with Mass Senior Action is they use some mentally ill people. I have to know this. There were two people there that were mentally ill. I know them from a coffee shop years ago. And they use them to, to go out, out in front, and they tell them they'll do anything that they're told to do. That well, that's makes supposition, very, right? No, I know it for a fact. Right, but I, we, I, I can testify that. that according Let, when well, Paul comes back, okay. if anybody out there wants to call and tell us about it, I mean, I'm not up to speed on it. Right. I know Paul. Mm -hmm. I've known him for a long time. I have a great deal mm -hmm. of respect for him. What I've seen, what he does for the Greater Lynn Seniors, is just, you know, he could have been Secretary of Health and Education. People, I mean, uh, for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, right. Baker would have pointed him to it. He refused to take that job and not to stay where he was. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. he did, yeah. So, frankly, Joe, Lynn has hired 
nine new police officers, bringing the staffing level to 172, which is far below the 195 considered optimal. The first order of governance at all levels is to ensure the tranquility and safety of its citizens, thus the need for armies and police. It's the price we pay for safe and civil society. It's the price we should all be willing to pay. Over and above costs is the need to respect the military and law enforcement. It is a critical in order for those institutions to function in our best interest. Unfortunately, today, respect is lacking. To illustrate, let's begin with a little thing dust up that happened in Philly. If we can put that clip mm -hmm. up there, Pedro, please. The suspect accused of shooting six police officers surrendered just after midnight. Police say 36 year old Maurice Hill opened fire at the officers who were trying to serve a warrant at a home on 15th Street yesterday afternoon. Now more than 10 hours later, this remains still a very active scene. Detectives combing through looking for more evidence from this massive shooting. The good news in all of this is that all injured Philadelphia police officers are expected to survive. Meanwhile, the suspected gunman surrendered just after midnight. We now have a better image of him. This is a past mugshot of Maurice Hill. He's 36 years old. Lots of questions remain this morning about this massive shootout with police. Fire, shot fire inside. I got off the shot. I got off the shot radio. Panic in the voices of their own. Six Philadelphia police officers shot while serving a warrant. After a nearly eight hour standoff, the suspected gunman, 36 year old Maurice Hill, surrenders to police. There's nothing short of astounding that in such a confined space that we didn't have more of a tragedy than we did. Police say officers were serving a narcotics warrant on the 3700 block of North 15th Street in the Nice Town Tioga section when the gunman opened fire. One officer was grazed in the head. Remarkably, all six officers not only survived, they were treated and released hours later. Another officer injured in a crash while responding to the scene remains hospitalized. As the chaos unfolded, two other police officers and three civilians were trapped inside the home as the shooter fired at police. SWAT was able to successfully extract uh, the two police officers that were trapped upstairs as well as uh, three prisoners. And they were all taken out safely uh, thus far. Neighbors watched in fear. When they um, started dumping with the, with the firepower and stuff like that, they did it right in front of the daycare. The babies was out and everything. Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney called for changes on gun control laws. But our officers need help. They need help. They need help with gun control. They need help with keeping these weapons out of these people's hands. And you can see investigators down the street here. This is actually Erie Ave, not too far uh, from Broad Street, from the scene where this all happened. 30 officers, we learned, discharged their weapons during the shootout. That officer that was injured in the car crash on the way to the scene remains hospitalized. We will, of course, continue to stay on top of this and bring you the latest developments as they become available. Reporting live in the Nicetown Tioga section of North Philadelphia, Shante Lands, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Right. Interestingly, they didn't. I, I didn't see anything there, but the police were treated rather badly. Right. They were taunted right. while that was happening. Well, first of all, of course, they're in a black area. Yeah. Okay. Number one, but they always use the same cliche: let's keep the guns out of these people's hands. Yeah. But what the statement should be made is: let's keep these people away from guns. Now, how do you do that, though? It's, it's virtually impossible to do that. Well, here's the whole thing. And if these people were white and white on white, they would be protesting morning, noon, and night, and Reverend Sharpton would be showing his lovely face there, okay? You think? Absolutely. That was his mm. voice. Mm. That's his thought, <laughs> not mine. Philadelphia <laughs> in the inner city is predominantly black. Of course it is, and, but here is, here's the problem. That mayor was the same mayor that did a dance when he found out they voted for, to make uh, Philadelphia sanctuary city. Do you remember right, that? Right. Whatever it was. Right. Well, is, so, is, he, is he doing the dance now? Right. No, of course he's not doing the dance. He does the easy way, get rid of guns. Get rid I of mean, guns. guns don't kill people. People kill right. people get with rid, guns. Get rid, get, get rid of these people, not the guns. And, and, and right. did you hear Elizabeth Warren's quote? Well, we're going to get to that. Okay. Well, let's put that up there, the graphic. Here it goes. Here's what she said, Elizabeth Warren. Five years ago, Michael Brown was murdered by a white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. 
Michael was unarmed, yet he shot, was shot six times. I stand with activists and organizers who continue to fight for justice for Michael. We must confront systema, uh, systemic, systemic racism and police violence head on. Now, here's the response. Reckless comments about law enforcement. Another slap in the face. These are the Massachusetts mm -hmm. Police Chiefs Association mm -hmm. responding. That's the problem. When you have right. politicians saying, he wasn't murdered mm -hmm. by a white mm -hmm. cop, Michael mm -hmm. Brown. He was a thug. Right. Remember right. that? Yeah. Okay. You never heard po politicians before disrespecting she, police. It, that's it, what I'm talking it's about. It's unheard she, of. She said, I quote, Five years ago, Michael Brown was murdered by a white police officer. Doesn't that send the wrong message? Right. Because that, the they people, talk about inciting because stuff. the people she thinks are going to vote for her, she has to say that statement. Right. Right. No, she doesn't. Right. Yes, yeah, she if does. She, According she, to her, then she shouldn't be elected. Right. Well, that's right. But she was. But that man, that that policeman, was acquitted. And, and the Justice Department looked into it, and I think it was Obama's. Uh, it was. It was. It was so, Obama. In, fact, it, it, in fact, it was Eric Holder, who was the Attorney General yeah, at the exactly. time. It was a black but she has general, the plums right? to turn around and say that a white police officer murdered Michael Brown. And that, who's she going to stand with? She's going to stand right. with Al Sharpton. Right. The clip that I couldn't show, they blocked it, by the way. Please right. define what you right. mean by the word plums. Right. Our guts. And, and In she, other words, thank you. And she can't be sued like us. Well, she's a public figure like us. She, she you know, she. Uh, uh, what do you he, mean like us? I mean, we're public figures too. But. Oh, okay. But, uh, maybe you are. I'm, but not. She, I'm not either. <laughs> we are actually public figures. But she is. She is a public figure. So, so, so the policeman cannot sue her. He can't. But the point of the matter is, is these are the people who are talking about the toxic environment in our country. <laughs> And they're the ones that are doing all the toxic talking. I mean, am I making sense here, Billy? Well, you know what happens is, you know, I worked in my jobs before. I worked with police uh, in two different communities. And the police, the police departments of today are not the police departments that battled the riots during the Democratic Convention in 1968. They're much more sophisticated. They're much more... Uh, in tune with who they are working with mm -hmm. in their community. In fact, what they do is work in the community. They, they know the people in the community. They, 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 un, they get it. Mm -hmm. They know what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, and we have lost this presumption of innocence in this country. In other no words, question. We, you, know, you know. And due process. And due process, mm -hmm. right. I mean, and, and not to have that, mm -hmm. to me, is, is not American, really. You know, because, yeah. you, know, you, you, you know, I have no problem with things, be, people being in, investigated, uh, you know, running it, r running it across. You know, having said that, though, I mean, there have been mistakes, and nothing, nobody's perfect. Departments aren't perfect either. I get that piece. But on the other hand, the big, some of these big cases and some of these talking points that we're seeing politically, you know, where, where, how can we bring it down? Well, like you said, this is one way to bring it down, and we never did during. In New York, they're dumping water on police officers right. and giggling. In no respect. ICE is being assaulted by Antifa. Mm -hmm. You know. What kind of stuff? Is, that's the lack of respect. Military men during the Vietnam War were spit at coming into this country, fighting the war right. and getting themselves blown up. You know, this reminds me, what's happening now is hearkening back to right. the 60s. Right. Mm -hmm. and, it's and, almost the and, genesis of and, this. And remember, no, it's, but, but the difference is who's creating it right. are the politicians. Yes. That's unusual. In Suffolk County, Rawlins, the DA in Suffolk County, keeps saying oh. over and over, she specifically said she will not prosecute people who assault policemen. She said that as an open statement. Wasn't there an individual who was caught by the police and he turned around and he said, ha, 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 you, you shoplifting. You and he said, I, 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 this is not a crime in Boston. They said, well, right. too bad you're right. not in Boston. No. Right. Happen to be outside of Boston City. Be because London. Rawls said she won't prosecute. Now, let's carry this one step further. We've heard about mass killings. We did a show on it last week. And, you know, it's a tragedy of first order. But let's put up Chicago for a second. This is three weekends in a row. Take a look at this. 45 shot, five fatally. That was last, this weekend, it just went right. by. Okay? This is after the mass shootings. Right. Look at the week of the mass shootings 59 shot, seven fatally. And the week before that, 48 mm. shot, eight fatally. All right. But hear me out. Here's the, the most amazing <clears throat> thing. Why is that not broadcast live? Because that is embarrassing. A guy walking into a Walmart and shooting 22 people, that's not embarrassing mm -hmm. anymore. Why is that? No. Because, we, because we're, we're becoming used to that kind of behavior. Desensitized? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You agree with that, Ralph? I, I, I don't think it happens. I don't, I, I, those things don't happen that often. The, the things at the mall and the churches do not happen that often. 
It, it, it's the things that are happening when we we just talking about in Chicago, all those killings, the, the 45 to 55 every week, uh, shootings every week in Chicago. That's what, that's what happens and all by the, the time. Way, and by the way, Billy, Baltimore's worse. Yeah. yeah. Accordingly, yeah, yeah. Baltimore is right. considered more dangerous, Ball, right? Remember I had the statistics in front of me last week. There's going to be over 300 killings in Baltimore. A city of the size of, of Boston, 600,000. The city of size of Boston <coughs> is going to have uh, 300 killings. And I think Boston will only have, I think, six or seven, maybe. Okay. But by the, by the way, the graphic we showed last week, if you remember correctly, was that you're twice as safe in Guatemala than you are in Baltimore. That's true. You yeah, know, right. they're fleeing, they say, Guatemala <laughs> because it's dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. and, and yet, Baltimore mm -hmm. is twice as dangerous as Guatemala. And they're having trouble getting people to go into the police force now because of Well, all we got this. nine in Lynn and ten to go. Right. <laughs> well, the, the other thing, too, is, uh, is that you have, uh, you know, this situation is, I lost my train of thought here, I'm sorry That's here, okay. but uh, that can happen with uh, some oh. of us in our advanced years. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're the junior in this crowd, by right. the way, you know, so you're not excused. So does that train come back? No, it hasn't, but I'll bring it up in a minute, though, I okay. guess. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> So in the meantime, I, I feel like General Stockdale. Who who am I and why am I here? Yeah. You know, that's yeah. You're running for vice what president. Am I doing here? <laughs> well, the devil goes viral, and we're going to have the Jewish kid talk about it. This is his friend Hirsch uh, Goldman, right? Hirsch Goldman. And, and this is, by the way, this was produced two days ago, three Hirsch days ago. Hirsch Goldman can say with one cartoon, thirty thousand words. In the old days, it used to be if a person wanted to become a terrorist, he'd have to fly to either uh, Yemen or uh, whatever to learn and be trained. Now you turn on the internet and you're being trained. That's interesting, yeah. isn't it? There's, there's a lot of truth to that. You know, before that's you go to, you, well, that's that's what he's saying. With, with what with one word, Hirsch Goldman is saying mm -hmm. ten thousand words. Mm -hmm. oh. Locked everything else out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and by the way, isn't there, isn't, well, did they do a correlation on this about, about the, disenfranchised? The, well, but that's not the issue. The issue is the Internet has, is causing us more trouble than it's worth. So, yeah. you want, should we get rid of it? I, I don't know if that's the answer, but right. relatively speaking, right. relatively speaking, the majority of people who are committing these horrific crimes right. are getting company from going on Internet. In the old days, if you were a little bit out of your mind, you were all by yourself. Now you're out of your mind. You have plenty of company by finding them on the internet. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense to you, but, Mr. Newell? But you, you, know, you, you gotta realize it was a. Wait, by the way, is it is this more critical than global warming then? Abs I mean, of course. Okay of course. then. Global warming does not exist. It's a non It's nonsense. Well, the point simply being is that. Thank you, we, Web Goldman. We we turn around and we start highlighting certain things that are really not that critical. I mean, for example. They talk about white nationals, white supremacy, right? That's one of the genesis of one of the reasons why we have all these mass killings. There's an upkick, they're saying. And they're being, they're being reinforced by politicians like Donald Trump, right, who does not disavow them. The point of the matter is, in 1920, 4% of the population of the United States were white supremacists. Today, it's 0.0003. It oh, doesn't even three. register on the scale. Right. Exactly. So the narrative that there's an upkick and that these crazy skinheads are going around causing all kinds of problems doesn't fit. Yeah. And if you take a look at it, of, and particularly during Obama's administration, Fort Hood, right. the Navy Yard, Washington Navy Yard, right. San Bernardino, right. the Pulse, right. were all right. people of color. Right. Virginia Tech, which was before right. Right. Obama. So the narrative that these right. are white nationalists doing it doesn't fit. Even if you talk about Sandy Hook, that was just a crazy kid right. shooting little babies. But remember, remember, remember last week I talked about all those, these, it was the 17,000 people will be killed, will, will, there will be homicides, 17,000 this year in the United States, homicides and guns using, using handguns, all right? And yeah, not really long guns. And that's, those are murders, usually one-on-one -on -one murders, usually black people killing black people. That's what I'm asking. Well, then they, something should be done about that. That's, that's right. the point. But, it's an you know, and this was, problem. This was brought up right. a while back. And, the, and a dust up between Cummings and uh, and uh, Trump, right? Right. What do you mean right. something should be done about it? Who the hell is going to do something about it? That's exactly the point. Nobody wants to do it because they can't. But Joe, one of my, my my point from earlier as we back up is is that you look at certain cities that you know it, it, we're looking right now at um, uh, you know Baltimore, 
Chicago yeah. with the stats that you just had. But think of another city, New York. New York turned things around a couple of decades ago. And Boston. And Boston doesn't put up with the amount of, of shootings and murders that other, that other cities Boston have. Boston is an intellectual city. That, well, but we you, brought you that know, up we, last week. But you yeah. know, and, and, New, and New York right. is a very profitable right. city. They won't allow that. Right. Well, well wait a minute. But no, but no, but the, but the things changed. The, the things happened in New York. There were some definite but, changes in New York no, a number of Chicago. years ago. But the reason why Baltimore and Boston are different is because of people like my daughter. She's a yuppie. She's got a great job. She lives in Boston. And those, her friends, they've pushed out everyone else. And they're the intellectuals that are taking over the city. And like Baltimore, where, where, where there was white flight. In Boston, we have white people coming in. And, and not, not only white, we have, we have we, we have all races, but this intellectuals coming in, as, as it, Avram has said. It, but, but, that's the, that's that the is difference. not accurate because oh, Baltimore is. or Maryland, the yeah. state of Maryland, is the richest per capita state in the country. But not, and the district that you're talking right. about is tale of two cities. There's right. abject poverty right. and there's right. unbelievable opulence right. side by side. Right. But you have that in Boston, too. No, you don't. No, you Boston don't. has a very low population, minority population, right. compared to Baltimore. But, but the, the point is, is that we, I think you were alluding to it earlier, is that people aren't, why aren't we talking more about Chicago? You know, why, why, exactly. aren't, why aren't we talking more about that? Because those are real lives, too. Why, does it, why doesn't, why don't we cover that? To me, why, why that, we go one step further? You brought up, or you, who, who brought up New York? You did, right? I did. All right. New York was a very dangerous city when Dinkins was mayor. Giuliani took over, and he started doing Stop and frisk, a frisk and search, and that stuff. But the thing that you're missing is the wall. The, 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 the Disney Corporation came into Manhattan and said, "Look, we show all of our films on 42nd Street. We'll pay the money. Let's clean the place up." And they did. Okay. Well, that's Walt, one part of New York. Walt, no, Walt Disney spent 300 million dollars transforming prostitution and killings on 42nd Street mm. and in Times Square. It's a whole new ball game now. It's the safest area in the city. No, no, but D Dinkins was out. When Dinkins went out, and who was, who was the man that came to Giuliani. Giuliani came in. Straight uh, everything out. The city, because I used to go into New York. I used, to, I used to go into New York to see accounts. And completely different uh, from Dinkins to Giuliani. No completely question about different. that. we got to get I'm moving on. Uh, our number here is 781-780-9460. If you want to call and opine. Uh, we got a little clip we want to put up there before we introduce the next segment. If Pedro, if we can put that little clip up there and move on. Tonight, the federal judge who is overseeing Jeffrey Epstein's criminal case says he wants more information, asking the Bureau of Prisons to explain what happened on July 23rd when Epstein was found injured in his cell. The apparent suicide attempt, he writes, has never been definitively explained. Also unexplained? Why Epstein hadn't been checked in his cell for hours leading up to his death, according to two law enforcement sources. Investigators want to know if the guards were asleep on the job and are comparing the logs from that night with security camera footage to look for discrepancies, according to officials familiar with the investigation. Also today, one of the first lawsuits against Epstein's more than $560 million estate was officially filed. Jennifer was a 14-year-old child. He was a predator. He groomed her. He had help. And everybody who helped him should be held responsible for ruining Jennifer's life. Jennifer Arose says Epstein raped her in his New York City home when she was 15, talking to NBC News just after Epstein's arrest. Justice for me would be for him really to spend the rest of his life in prison. Now that Epstein is gone, this suit is going after his associates, accusing three unidentified employees, a recruiter, a secretary, and a maid of facilitating the sexual assault in the early 2000s. It also names Epstein's longtime friend and associate, Ghislaine Maxwell, who Arose says she never met. The suit alleges that Maxwell enabled what prosecutors call a sex trafficking ring of children. In 2003, long before he was accused of child sex abuse, Epstein spoke with a reporter on his private Caribbean island. I realize what I am. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. The conversation posted by Bloomberg ranges from his fabulous wealth to science and math. On my own island, or on my own ranch, I can think the thoughts I want to think. I can do the work I want to do. I have the freedom to explore as, as I see fit. This is what that same island looked like on Monday. 
swarming with FBI agents. Stephanie, has Ghislaine Maxwell responded to any of these allegations? Well, Maxwell has denied similar allegations in sworn testimony, but she has not responded to our repeated request for comment. What's interesting, and you brought it up, Bill, is you know where Maxwell is? Well, there's a report that she's staying in Manchester by the sea with, an, a, with a friend or whatever. Yeah, yeah. she has right. a boat, right. and uh, she's right. holed up there. I'd hate to, uh, well, let me put it this way. Right. If anybody who's holding her life insurance policy has right. got a good chance of collecting. Right. They, they, they just, just today came out that uh, when they, they did a partial uh, autopsy and Epstein's hyoid, H-Y-O-I-D bone was broken. And that, that's usually because someone is strangled, not because they hung. Well, we have twists and turns. Right. We'll come up there and go to that point. You see, what you're doing is you're anticipating I know, what we I already do. have here. <laughs> so the autopsy finds broken bones in Epstein's neck which is common to victims of homicide strangulation. Isn't right. that what you try to say? I try to Very say that. Very good. <laughs> That's what so, I heard. Yeah. Uh, and I keep trying. Well, he was confident, by the way, that's Epstein, that he could fight the child sex trafficking charges against them. He said to his lawyers, I'll see you Sunday. He was in a great mood. Yeah. Wait one yeah. second. And then he wanted to get bail. You know why he wanted to get bail? Because he wanted to cooperate. That's the mistake he made. As soon as he said, I'm going to cooperate, it was time for him to go. Go ahead. Years ago, <clears throat> when he first got into trouble, and it was even more serious than it is now, he got out of everything. Yeah. He got out of everything. Yeah. A man like that is not going to kill himself because he mm -hmm. thinks he's going to get out of this too. Exactly. Okay? That's but, exactly but, right. But what happened in this particular scenario, some very heavy-duty politicians, actors, bankers and whatnot, the names have been coming to the, to the forefront. He had to go. I remember seeing an interview with a hitman on N MSNBC saying that the easiest contract killings he ever had was when he had to kill somebody in jail. I said, I said how could that be? <laughs> because I knew where they were. Does everybody well, know? When I got to kill somebody in Chicago, I got to find where they live. <laughs> I got to find the landlord right. what time they go out to work. It was a major production. I don't okay. think everybody out there understands what we're talking about. We're talking about 12 and 13, 14-year-old girls who were taken to this island to have sex with men. With we understand men. that. I'm not everybody sure everybody understands knows that. that. I don't know what you don't understand about it. I That's why he's in jail. Out That's why he's in jail. Well, wait a second. Before we with the understanding, we have to have our folks out here pine in to our poll, if you don't mind. Okay. And the poll is simply this. Did Epstein commit suicide? No way in hell from Lapidus, the Jewish kid. Well, that's what you say, but let the folks out there okay. say what they want to say. Okay. Did Epstein commit suicide, or is it a conspiracy theory? Shh, keep quiet about it. Is that what it's all about? Who knows? Last week's poll, by the way, and we have it, look at this one. 72%, and the question was, is white nationalism the spur of mass shootings? Thankfully, there's some sanity <laughs> right. that said 72% of the people said, no, it isn't. And that sounds about right. So I wish that those Democrats, when they have right. the debate, would realize that they're barking up the wrong tree. Well, they don't watch Frankly Speaking. That's their problem. That's, you, that's exactly right. So, folks, there's art, and guess what? <laughs> there's art. Now take a peek at the art. First of all, put this up there. Look at this collage. My poor, see that Leonardo da Vinci, Mona right. Lisa, right. and and Picasso, that's Sargent, by the way, right. great American artist, right. and there's Freda, right. and Andy Warhol, Fredo. and that's Lynn Mass. Fredo. And then, this is odd, right here, Passing Bill. That was in Jeffrey Epstein's oil painting of Bill Clinton. This isn't one dress. of your paintings, Joe, is it? You didn't do this Sorry. painting, though, right? I did not do this painting. Okay, that's okay. on the island, right? That was the one no, on the island. No, that's not on the oh, island. I thought that's it was in this penthouse island. of Manhattan. Oh, that was in Manhattan. Get oh. your facts straight there, Ralph, and don't sorry. come on the show anymore. Oh, I won't. I'm kidding, by the is way. Is that Billery? By Petrina. She's the painter. Petrina Ryan Cleed. And that's a Stachy. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, yeah. The, the thing of it is that... Um, <clears throat> You have to understand, people like Bill Clinton, who get attracted to a guy like Jeffrey Epstein, 
It's because they think that no harm is ever going to c- come their way, and they can do the most disgusting things that you can possibly imagine. <laughs> when you work? say attracted, what do right you mean now? by that? Yeah, <laughs> he's attracted because <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein has a kind of lifestyle he wish he had himself. No, that's the, the question up here. They have is is that Hillary's dress? No, it isn't. That's that is a play off of Monica Lewinsky. Remember the famous blue know. dress? I don't know. That's what that's all about. And it's in the Oval Office, by the way. That pose. If you put up again. I mean, this is fascinating. This is an actual painting. This is not photoshopped. You get what I mean? No, yeah, it's a painting in his in his in his apartment. Yeah. And well, by the way, when we take a break, guess who came? Uh, with about a few minutes left, but we'll get to it in a second. <laughs> we got a chair here. Not yeah. yet. We got the chair. Warm up the chair. <laughs> we were going to run through Lynn, and then we're going to bring in the Reverend, or not the Reverend, yeah. the Rabbi, Rabbi. No, Reverend. Ira. That's up to you. Yeah. I say no for him being late. <laughs> Oh, you want to punish him? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, are you, you, man. you don't call a rabbi a reverend. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with Fredo? That? I'm going to call you Fredo from now but on. Him, he be By the way, speaking Fredo, of Fredo, Fredo. You know, and, I, and, and, and Fredo, I'm going to tell you right here and now. Fredo. I take offense to that as an Italian American. I find that to be I a take racial, offense you, not racial, you being an, an ethnic Italian. slur. And I happen to think Cuomo's right on this. And no, not, it's not racial. It's ethnic. Let's get back to Jeffrey Epstein for a second. Can yes, I say something to you? He's Jewish, you know. Well, yes, he is. But at the same time, his attorneys told him we'll get out of this that's right he did not he was confident that he was going to beat the rap as a matter of fact in two weeks he was going to be released on bail did it happen Just well look what happened exactly we got to do a spin around lynn and we'll take a quick break in order to get the, the rabbi on anyway spin around lynn as mentioned before, we have nine new police officers, and that's on our dime, by the way. Uh, have we got that graphic? There you go. Yeah, there it is. So, the second thing is that uh, there's no deal. There's no deal that 20 million on uh, Street development is not going to happen, and they have to go before the council again. And the fourth hole, I don't think it's going to happen either. This one. Which one? Oh, the union ratified, by the way. Okay. Ratifies the uh, don't, GE don't contract. Why should, why, should, why should that be so uh, astounding to you? Well, they, 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 they had no well, choice. Well, half a billion dollars worth of... But they I, had no I, choice. I agree. It's not astounding. It's just we're giving the information out there. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get the reverend... I mean, the uh, reverend? Reverend, it's reverend, it's rabbi, the rabbi. 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 Well, I'm a Christian. I, I, he, be, okay. be thankful it's him because according we to even me, put I, him on? I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put you on now. And then we have Lynch what? parking lots. All uh, right. Do you mind? Do you mind? Just a cable. Uh, Lynch okay. uh, parking lots are ripe for development. And what they're trying to do is sell airspace, I guess. I don't know what they're trying to do. But too late. Or I don't know if it's too late. And here we have almost. It's working. Stay tuned, folks, because this show is whatever. You like it, Billy? So far, it's called chaos. Yeah, so far, so good. Yeah, it's, it's organized chaos. You know, it's you know, you know, you know, he mentioned that more people should be watching, frankly speaking. Maybe you could get uh, President Trump to tweet out a little more on this program. You know, it would only help. That's up to you by getting him on to, to YouTube live. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what we're working yeah. on. Well, folks, we're going to go national. Uh, <laughs> Billy Doe, yeah. myself, right. and the rest of the crew. And uh, we should, by the way. We, we should oh, have Trump By the way, down folks, here. you see this guy here with the beard? He happens to be the Reverend Rabbi. No, that's <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, is it Jeffrey? It's Jeffrey Epstein. In disguise? <laughs> yeah. He's so in the, how you Reverend. How you rabbi, Good. Rabbi, Rabbi, you Rabbi. You call him what you want to call him. Rabbi, Rabbi. Nice that you could make it. Uh, let's see how much time we have left here. You have a few minutes. Right. So, there was something that I noted in the news about something. Oh, I guess that had to do with Israel, right? In other words, the two gals. The two congresswomen, right. Right. men, right. man, with people. Persons. Right. Persons. Manhole covers. Can't say that anymore, you know. Right. Oh, from Minnesota and from right. Michigan are denied the right to right. go into Israel. Why they, is that? Because they're controversial and they're very anti-Semitic and they're very right. anti-Israel. Right. So why the hell should we right. say to them, hello, come right. on in? Rashid Tlaib and Elam Omar have been banned from Israel. Wasn't well, Michael Savage banned from the United Kingdom? I think he was. Yeah, he was. No, don't think he was. And let me ask you this, Reverend. Rabbi. Uh, oh, Rabbi. Rabbi. Reverend. Would you invite a Thanksgiving to a Thanksgiving dinner? Would you invite someone that doesn't like your family? No. Huh? No. Exactly. I rush my kids. Uh-huh. So now you can speak. Okay. 
Sorry, uh, late gentlemen, the traffic's unbelievable. I have, I prepared something very special for you that I've never tried with anybody else. <clears throat> Please, if I can, give me about two, three minutes, no interruptions. Watch this. I want to talk about Trump's idea of the wall, and I'll tell you something. Not so much why. Not even a matter of, fine, we're going to catch a million people who are troublemakers, everything that he calls people. No. What he doesn't say, or at least he doesn't say often, is it's the economic problem. Large people, groups of people are bankrupting cities. So the question is, how do we build the wall according to what Trump promised, and how does he get the Democrats on board? I've, worked, I've been thinking about this for months, a tremendous plan. Let's go like this. Number one, all the Democrats, all for foreign aid, especially to poor countries, right? Yes. Okay. Also, every time the United States gives foreign aid to, one, to a banana republic or any other kind of dictatorship, can we manage the money once it gets into the leader's hands? We couldn't manage the 16 billion went to Baltimore. Okay, so we, in other words, once it's out of our hands and they have it there, yeah. we can't manage it, right? Okay, now, here's what I believe somebody in the Trump administration should have thought of, and I have never heard of this. You make a deal, quietly of course, with about half a dozen of these South American countries. I'm going to get you foreign aid. I'm going to get you a lot of foreign aid. The Democrats will sign on to it. Now, I'm going to get you foreign aid. You have to promise me this. Part of that foreign aid has to be used to employ people to go to Mexico and build the wall. Number one, the South American <laughs> standard of living is lower. It will cost less. Of course, they got a promise to buy materials from the United States so at least our people don't lose completely. And, and on top of that, there's another part of the deal. Uh, of course, they're going to be taxed by their own governments. The government's going to get even more money back. On top of that, these countries have to promise they recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Why? Because we need Israel to do something back. Great. You send all these wonderful workers to the wall at their prices. Wonderful. Who says they're not going to be pushed? by the drug lords to make it weak, to make it substandard. That's why, in return for these countries recognizing Israel, Israel has to promise the United States and them that they're going to send their military experts who know how to build walls better than anybody and who are not in tank to the drug lords, you have them come over and supervise the building. There's no holes, there's no weaknesses. The, the South American countries make money. They have good working people. They're happy. The Democrats are happy because they gave foreign aid. Trump is happy because, in theory, South America did pay for the wall. What's wrong with that plan? Nothing. Billy, that's over the top and the first <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, now, not I'm only not you, now I'm glad you came because that was brilliant. It was. <laughs> right, right. I, mean, I mean, seriously, Billy. There's, there's some seeds there. I, 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 I got to give them credit on that. There's I'm, something that you want. So we're paying for it. They're not paying for it, but they're building it. Yeah. So, yeah. And we're paying less because... The, no, I hear you. I hear you. The, yeah. trouble, yeah. the trouble is we have a Democratic Congress. And they, they just don't want to do anything to help them out at all. Even if it's good for the country, even if it makes sense, like, like what you just said, does make sense. They theory, won't do it. In theory, he doesn't tell the Democrats. I mean, I had to blow it now, but right. in theory, he doesn't tell the Democrats. I'm going to go on with the foreign aid. Well, and Charlie's story. on the oh. phone. And Charlie, how are you this evening? Is it Charlie? Uh, yes, it is. How are you, Charlie? I'm doing very good. I want you to do me a favor tonight. I'm listening. Go ahead. All right. Tonight in Manchester, New Hampshire, there is tonight in Manchester, New Hampshire, there is Trump's convention. And they gave me an RSVP. I want to give it to the rabbi to go up there and explain what he just explained to Trump himself. It's <laughs> a good point. Very good point. Charlie, I'm brilliant. I love my. I love our audience. And I want. And I want the rest of you to all go. No theory. It's all practice right Thank here. Thank you, Charlie. Right? Charlie, you have a great evening. Uh, bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Oh, it's pretty good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good, actually. No, actually, that's, that's an There's going to be traffic, though. <laughs> you know, there's going to be yeah, a lot of traffic going up to Manchester this time of day, though. I would never have, <laughs> I would never have the opportunity of there to say what I said here. 
But I know that you now have a national audience here. I've heard that you've got a tremendous national audience. It's happening. Believe me, it'll get to Trump's ears. Mm -hmm. it's, it's happening. So, any case, that's an interesting novel idea. The, you talk about train of thought losing it. I just lost mine, so I'm a senior citizen. Do you have anything to say to pick me up on what? No, no. But, well, By the way, get some razor blades the next time. You yeah, yeah, you've got to shave that stuff. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I'm telling you right now, is going to have a very easy time to get back into office. He's probably going to have a much easier time than he had the last time around. The only thing that scares me is there's going to be more trouble with this election than you can imagine, more scams, more everything known to mankind, okay? I, I, I just, you know, what, what the rabbi said is just fantastic. I have always respected Jews. I had many Jewish friends growing up, and I thought they were the smartest people. Thank and people you, don't, re people don't <laughs> realize you, this. Going back to biblical times, one of, one of the most famous Jews was the first to use a computer. Did you know that? He what was, was that? The, the, one of the Jews was the first to use a computer back in biblical times. Who was that? It was Jesus? name was Moses. Oh, really? His name was Moses, yes, yes. He was Egyptian, wasn't he? he yes. He, he got data on his tablet from the cloud. <laughs> Not bad. That's is that the good. joke you, you brought in with I you tonight? I brought the joke okay. in. I've been trying to use it. <laughs> he was so upset. Is he was so upset. He, he pulled it off. As far as I think he pulled it off. I think he pulled, it, think he pulled it off. And that was bad as hell at you, but I'm not There is a joke right here, folks. I had to put it into context, but it's out of context. I remember this, 781 we can't solve all the problems, but at least we're dealing with some of them. So... What else do you have, Rabbi, that's in your pocket? And any more ideas that you can give us? You know, the audience out there okay. loves you. You know that, don't you? I hope so. It's nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Folks, by the way, this is a guy that went to B, BU, you, BU right. uh, a yeah. history major. Right. No, journalism major. Really? Graduate school in political science in City right. University of New York. Can oh, that's where you met? Uh, well, no, I met, was, I met, 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 I met in Boston. Boston. Hmm. back in a synagogue in Brooklyn. Really? Yes. Back in 1970. I met him just before I met my wife. Yeah. And we just celebrated our 41st wedding anniversary. So it, you can see how long it goes. Okay. I read okay. that, uh, I was surprised at this. I, I, I go over to a place called Larry Levin's mm -hmm. Larry, yeah. on okay. Lowell Street with uh, this nice lady that I drive here and there at times. To, and um, I pick up the paper every time I'm there and I just read it. and. They had an article about there's a decrease, or uh, uh, many Jews are no longer going kosher. Is there some truth to that? Unfortunately, it's, 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 it's a thing of the past, but you know what? These things run in cycles, it'll come back again. Mm. So you think it'll be a comeback factor? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, yeah. there are, I would guess, between 75 and 80% of the Jews in the United States are not strictly observant. So that's nothing new. Yeah. But if anything, I believe that number is beginning to go down, which means I believe more Jews are, are keeping kosher and doing the other things that we're supposed Explain to do. Explain to people what kosher is all about, because <laughs> I, I didn't understand it. it. It's separating poultry from <clears throat> dairy. That's one small fraction. OK, I mean, books that could fill this room discuss keeping kosher. In a standing on water lake, so to speak, you definitely have to separate meat and milk. That's a very big thing. Some people actually have two refrigerators. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and two uh, sinks, and two, two stoves, and, right. and, two exactly. and, two two and two sets of plates, and two sets of silverware. We have two sinks, two sets of silverware. I do in my house, too. Yeah. Did you? Absolutely. Absolutely, Absolutely. Okay. yes. But far beyond that, certain animals we're not allowed to eat at all. It says so in the five books of Moses. So shellfish, right? Or shellfish, pork, a whole bunch of other things. And to explain why in each of them is a problem, but the idea being that a number of those animals you can't eat under any event. And even those animals you can, the most popular ones, cows, chickens, things like this, you have to, they have to be slaughtered by somebody who is a, almost a genius in the Jewish law of how to do it. And by the way, it is such a humane way. Yeah, that's, that's the thing about and it. And let me tell you this much. They take a knife about this long. In one movement, they slit the animal's throat. Before each slitting, the, one, the slaughterer has to take his fingernail, take the knife, put it under his fingernail. If he detects a nick, 
He cannot use that knife until they straighten it out. That's how smooth and quick and humane the slaughter is. I understand that the Arabs also are kosher. And sometimes, sometimes they inter interchange. Is in that the, true? In the Quran, which I've read numerous times, they can eat kosher meat. We can't eat their meat. It's called halal. And the fact of the matter is that they use a lot of things that we wouldn't find suitable. But relatively speaking, the most amazing thing, with all the problems between us and the Arabs, they can eat kosher meat. Interesting. <clears throat> By the way, Billy, he's writing a screenplay that's, what, how far along? How, what it's, you, it's, it's almost there. And it's a fascinating, why, why, folks, well, can you give a little synopsis or am I, am I imposing on you? Well, I happen to read online about the girl who was the first Palestinian suicide bomber in Israel. In 2002, she killed herself and, and about 16 other people. I contacted her family after I read it, and I told them, I'd like to make a stage play about this, but not from the, a Jewish perspective. For once, do it in the Palestinian perspective. What made her that upset and that mm -hmm. mad that she could possibly do something like that? And I told the mother I would keep in touch with you, and every so often I would send you things, and so far we've been getting along very well because she said to me, I trust you now. You're not telling this from a Jewish story, you're telling it from her story. And I said, otherwise it wouldn't be a good story. Between the Arabs and the Jews, it's been going on for over 5,000 years. Is it going to be settled tomorrow? No, it's not. Will it ever be settled? It could possibly be not, but one has to learn that whenever you take a life of someone else, you accomplish not, nothing. Mm -hmm. Can uh, you, you ask me about another thought I might have in developing thank things? You. Can you give me about two or three thank minutes you. to be able to take off on something here? Yep. I mean, it sounds like Obama has a great idea for this thing. I personally believe that all these great politicians wanting to make peace in the Middle East are not going to be able to do it. It is impossible, and I'll tell you why. It goes back, curiously enough, to Louis XIV of France. <laughs> yep. I want to hear this one. Okay, Louis XIV of France was known as Le Roi Soleil, the Sun King. Yes. He also says, l'état c'est moi, I am the state. Louis was a dictator. He had one of the longest reigns in European history, I think 72 years. That's right. What Louis did was, he knew he had the people in squalor, in, in famine, in illiteracy, in poverty, in oppression. He knew he had that. He kept it. Something else he said, après moi le déluge, after me the flood. What does that mean? He had an iron grip on the people. And he knew his successors would not be able to do as good a job as he did. He was right. His great-grandson got his head chopped off in the French Revolution. Louis understood. I mean, I don't endorse this, of course, but uh, analyzing it, Louis understood. You give somebody a finger, they're going to want to take a whole hand. You give them a taste of, of a better life, they're going to want more and more and more and more. And that's how Louis kept that tightness. Now, we may make jokes about the Arabs not being the most brilliant people on earth. Their leadership is smart. They, I am sure they read Louis XIV. I'm sure they understood Louis' philosophy. And what happens? The same thing. They don't want their people to have exposure to a better life mm -hmm. because you give them a little, they're going to want more. Just give me one more minute. Okay. Exactly. So what happened? Also in Louis' case, the minute the people even hinted at an uprising, what did he do? He started a war. War. The whole country comes together with the water's edge. That's foreign policy. Great. The Arabs learned all this. They don't want their people to have a better life because they'll throw off the dictatorships. In fact, that's why the real reason they don't want Arabs in Israeli jails. Because these Arabs are being treated better in Israeli jails than they are in Freedom in, in Saudi Arabia. That's, or that's, in any of these Arab countries. That's a, the best compliment I got was after corresponding with the woman, her mother, she said to me, I never realized until you pointed out to me that my enemy is not Israel. My enemy are my own people. Yeah. <laughs> because they don't want them to understand that the, the that the corruption there is so beyond belief right. 
that they keep their people down right. and they live in squalor, and yet the people who, who lead the Palestinians are multi-zillionaires. But that's not unique to the Arabs. Right. No, no, great. That is not but there's, unique. There's that, one that final same thing. philosophy, and this is what we were talking about China earlier. Yeah. China, that's precisely the right. problem in China. That's right. precisely the problem right. in Latin and Central right. America. In order to maintain power, you have to keep people impoverished. Right. Exactly. But and what, what was the French Revolution? What happened during the French Revolution? They when chopped it came, heads they, off. They went, they, of, the, of what? Of the uh, elite. Of the, of the elite, the right. people who had money, and also of the, the religious, which mostly Catholic then. They went after and they, they got rid of but the I priests. Need, we need to make a it's, distinction here, right. however. And I don't want people out there to misunderstand Islam and Arab are not synonymous per se. Mm -hmm. Because if you take someone from Albania, and Albania is the only majority Muslim nation in Europe, mm -hmm. they have an entirely different philosophy of Islam or view of Islam. Right. And Indonesia, which is the largest populated state of Islam, mm -hmm. is it not right. population-wide? Right. So Arabs practice right. a different right. brand. Also, it's like Christians are right. much different Also brand. in Turkey and Morocco, they're different yeah. too. What's unique right. in this Turkey situation, I agree with you that these things are happening in China and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. What's unique here is as follows. The, all the radical Arabs, or Muslims, whatever, are saying, we want to drive Israel into the sea. No, they don't. They're telling that to their people to rile them up. It, they don't want them in the sea because they no longer will have a scapegoat. They that's don't a want, great point. They don't want to give that's their a, people freedom. That's a great point, but let me go one step They want the status quo I forever. understand that. So why is it that, well, Persia, yeah. Iran, used to be the Farsi, right? They're the ones that came up with this whole idea of one God to start with, right? Didn't they, basically? Well, the Jews. Well, the, the Jews got it from the Farsi, did they not? No, I don't think so. The, no? the Parsi's got it from the Jews. Okay. But, you always right. have to take first place, huh? Um, but I'm, t I'm okay. telling you that that's the way it works. So, in any case, why is it that we had an administration, the past administration, that surreptitiously gave $150 billion to Iran? Because why? Did they not? Be because the, the, the most stupidest politicians in the world are the ones that think they're going to make peace between Israel and the Arabs. That's right. Take, a, take Bill Clinton, okay? Bill Clinton dedicated his whole life to try to make peace. It's impossible. He was it, in a blue dress. He got off. Okay, but that's, that's neither here nor there. But why are these left-wing people in, in, the, in the United States now, especially Tlaib and Omar, and in Europe even, and, and Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn, who was the head of the Labour Party, which is the, the left-wing party in England, three of the MPs, which are Labour Party, they, they, they gave anti-Semitic remarks and they had to, had to resign. Corbyn, who supports uh, anti-Israel uh, situations all the time, he remains in power. But why is it always these left-wing people, all right, whether in England or the, or the United States, why are they always against the Jews? I have a theory. What do you think, Rabbi? Because they think that's what the people want to hear. No, because they're, because they, they're perceived as rich. That, uh, that I that, believe, is a... That, that is, is a useful rallying cry. Okay. But the very first time I came here, I believe Joe asked me the question, why anti-Semitism? Mm -hmm. I will stand behind what I said the first time. When it came to, remember, the Hebrew word for hatred is sinner. Mm -hmm. We got the five books of Moses and all the beauty and the morality and the decency at Sinai. They have sinner to us because of Sinai. We were there first. We had 600,000 men, plus women and children, witnessing God giving these commandments to right. us. So it, comes down, it comes down to one word. One word. Jealousy. Yes. Right. That's what right. we said last Enemy time. Enemy jealousy, yeah. Right. Deadly sin. And the Ten Commandments on you, a tablet, too. <laughs> you know what... From the cloud. From the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> a little history lesson, folks. When the Ottoman Empire collapsed after World War I, that the British and the French did an awful job of drawing up artificial boundary lines in that region of the world. That was the genesis of a lot of the problems we have in Iraq. That's an artificial state. Syria is an artificial state. You know, Palestine was never satisfied. The Balfour Amendment uh, was that. That was back in 1918. But that was by the English. Balfour by the English, the, English the, British, the British and the French had a field day drawing up bad lines. 
and causing uh, the Kurds were separated uh -huh. into three or four different national states, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So a lot of it has to do with uh, actually politics, as you pointed yeah. out, bad well, politics. Well, the, the thing about this, yeah. why did the British leave Palestine, which is Israel now, why did they leave it? Because number one, they weren't a world power anymore. And number two, they couldn't keep themselves together. They just were right. spread too thin. They were supposed to be protectorates, correct, at the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Any country they ever set foot in as, after they left hated their guts to this day. Huh. Take a look at India. What, I, what I've taught in this area, I, I was once a history teacher in another life. I went, and, very simple. In 1918, at the treaty peace, uh, conference at Versailles, Versailles. All of these nationalistic groups, like for example, Czechoslovakia, yeah. the Czechs, the Slovaks, and nearby, the Serbs, and everybody said, <coughs> quoting all Andrew Jackson, to the victor belongs the spoils, we joined the war effort. We helped you win. Give us our rewards. That's and our it. rewards are our national states. Well, the point of, and, what, and that created World War II, because in these boundary lines called Czechoslovakia, created state, were ethnic Germans. In the Sudetenland, they were all Germans that wanted to be united with Germany, and they never saw themselves as being Czechs to start with, okay? And it, it goes over and over again. And these are just bad decisions made by the Treaty of Versailles was one. Italy turned around and decided, the heck with you guys, you gave us the shaft after World War I when right. we fought against the Austrians, right. so we're going the other way this time. Isn't that what happened? Basically, yes. so I mean, but, you but, know, you know, I, I still think it's left-wing labor against against the rich people, because you know. Why would left-wing be against the rich people? Well, be, be, because left-wing labor, right? The people that that uh, are in the labor unions. Uh, I think the, the rich people control the very rich control labor, the huge they, labor as a mechanism. They of think that the, the rich people are the enemy. They think that they're the enemy. Who? The, the the labor people they think that the rich people are the enemy. That's what Liz Warren is is, is talking about. You think it's they think and because they see the Jews as the rich people. I right? don't see it that way at all. Well, I see it I see it as this. I say that there are a group of people, whomever they may be. Right. I mean, there are not too many Jews in China. Well, you know what I'm trying? They're not running the show over there. Why do the Arabs support the uh, support the Nazis then? Why do they support the Nazis Who? in World War Two? Who? The, yeah. the, the, yeah. they, were, they were on the side of the Nazis. Cool. Because of the economics. Arabs. Because of economics. Because, of, because they got shafted in, in, in the Ottoman Empire in World War I. Uh, the Ottoman Empire I was, was allied that, with Germany right. in World War I. Right. Okay? And so they got shafted in the Treaty of Versailles is exactly what he said. The, the and by the way, we have the sign for rep. We're going to have new history lessons. Rabbi, be on time next time. We're out of time. <laughs>